All right, so let's get started with our, uh, I call it Mota, but it's not Mota. I actually don't even smoke pot. I don't do anything. I don't even do aspirin. I'm not kidding. I don't do anything. I just, and I barely do any caffeine. And I just decided to completely stop that. And man, was that painful. It physically, at least, I was a green tea guy. So I used to do these shot blocks. Man, that's on fire, dude. All right. All right, let's break up that energy, man. All right, take a deep breath, everyone. Let's get this going. We're going to get the candle going. This is kind of our cool thing. start uh we could start with the negative stuff but um i kind of want to start with the fun stuff We all know about narcissists is they are a little bit nutty. <laughs> I've got some really funny stories in here and what I want, oh hey Amy, you get my incense and my candle, let's do it. All right, we're ready to go. I, you know, I don't know what it is, but when when I get at least one or two comments, I'm like, it's, I feel like, because I always feel like, you know, do I know these people or who is it? Are you listening? So all right, I'm ready to go now. Thank you, Amy, for doing that. I appreciate it. All right, so let me know if I'm too loud or, you know, I don't know if I can adjust the volume on this, but all right, so one thing we know about narcissists is they are lying, cheating bastards, okay? And, motherfucker, they are... All right, I'm going to start with a couple negative things, but I'm, I'm going to go into some hilarious things, because it's the full moon tonight, so I figure why not? And one thing... Oh, yeah, I know what I was going to say. One thing I want you guys to do... Absolutely, Sammy's listening to you. Volume is good. Okay. So... As I get going on this, I want you guys to throw something down on there. Let me go through the first two things here, but that's really not what this evening is going to be about. It's gonna, I promise you, it's going to be funny, and you're going to be able to relate. Again, it's kind of a – I wish it was Halloween because it would be a good Halloween, but at least we have a full moon tonight, okay, which, which inspired it. I went outside, and I saw the full moon. I thought, oh, shit, I got to do this one. And it's one I've wanted to do, and I've already told you about. It's the what the fuck moments with narcissists. All right, so, all right, so one of the what the fuck moments with the narcissist is they want to see your downfall. All right, and they can't understand why you're so upset about that. Okay, and so another thing narcissists will do is they want to be the all important one. They want to succeed in business and life. And they want to make sure you don't. That is the most mind-boggling. Well, actually, I'll explain why that is in a second. There's actually a reason. It's the way they process information, okay? And so they always want you be, to be in the background, and they want you to praise them. But not just, you know, they, hopefully they want to get famous in the world like an actor or business person or whatever, okay? Or even in just their group. So here's what it is. When you are in the far left brain, when you – are far enough out of the right brain, you start thinking in what I called last night the either or mentality. And I'm going to make it really simple. I don't want to go over it too much because we've gone over it a lot. And then I'll get on to the next thing. Is they can't help but think in terms of either or. Now, it's really weird because when they go to work, they will even be submissive to other people, especially if they see them as richer or higher ranking or whatever. They'll be super cool to those people. But when you're in a friendship or a relationship, or even if it's a boss, something like that, where you have to work with them every single day, they will beat you down. It's because in their world, either I'm the best or you're the best, and I can't have you the best. Either I'm right or you're right. So we already went over this. So they look at the at, they look at life in terms of you're down here and they're up here. Either I'm up here, or or you're up here, and I'm not. If you're up and if you're up here, that means I'm down here. Like in the last video where my ex-girlfriend, uh, whenever she would come over, and we had a lot. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> we'll get into that. Uh, remember what I said last night? She would say, she would show up all dolled up and really happy and wanting to go to the mall. And um, 
and I'd open the door happy also. And she'd be like, hey, honey. She'd get like really sad. Like, what's wrong? Well, I just happened to be going over this with a client, the either or mentality. I learned an NLP. And I said, sweetie, I go, do you think that if I'm happy that you can't be happy? She goes, well, yeah. I go, why can't we both be happy? And she goes, she kind of, you could see her eyes kind of people like, can we do that? I'm like, yeah. She goes, oh, I didn't know that. So literally people like this will literally hurt people around them in order to feel good about themselves because with that, that perspective of either or, they really believe that, well, either you're happy or I'm happy. Either you're successful or I'm successful. And a narcissist, sadly, is locked into it to such a degree that even, okay, even right now as I'm talking right now, if I were to say this to a narcissist to explain, like, like there's another perspective. There's a perspective and in both, and, and, and now we can both be happy. You can be happy and I can be happy. We can both be happy. We can both be successful. We can both support each other and lift each other. They will look at you and think you're pulling a slick one on them because it it's like they're so locked in to the far left brain again because they don't want to go to the right brain. It's it's either they're brain damaged and I don't and I mean this seriously. I'm not I'm not trying to be mean. Or they have gotten so disconnected. And this is what I really believe is they disconnected from their emotional brain, their emotions and feelings to the extent that they're like they that's that's an area of thinking they won't even go to they're not going to do it okay so it causes them to constantly cut you down push you down get you fired from your job especially if you're making more money hell my ex-girlfriend literally said to me i got really mad at her one day and i go i don't understand like you know you want me to buy you things and do things and all that costs money i go and yet you always screw me over like literally she answered the phone one time and a client called and she hung it up. Now this is pre cell phone and pre like phone identity and all that stuff. It was just a regular freaking landline phone that was up on the wall. Remember those? And she hung up the phone. I go, who is that? She goes, Oh, it was, it was a customer. I'm like, Oh, I go, well, what's their number? You know, Cause you know, I wanted to call them back. She goes, Oh, I don't know. I go, well, did you get their name? She goes, no. I'm like, why do you do this? You know, because it would have been better if she left to go to voicemail. Why do you do this? And I got, so I go, it's almost like you don't want me to make more money. And she goes, well, I don't. I'm like, well, why? She goes, because then you'd be making more than me, and and that wouldn't make me feel good. And I'm like, oh my god! Like that was when I realized like something is wrong with this person. Like that was just I lost it, man. So now let me see what Amy wrote. I got some good stuff. I promise you guys, it's gonna be hilarious in a second. So there is no we both can be happy yet. There's something amazing was going on with my business. Yeah, all of a sudden he was so depressed. Yeah, they get sad. They get depressed. They get upset. Yeah. Yeah, with his project, I supported yeah to the fullest. Yeah, of course, it's always that way. And that's another thing. You will totally support them in everything. Okay, my ex-girlfriend, she was working this really shitty job. And it was bad. They were, um, you know, when you go to the bar or the restaurant and the, and the bartender has that little, that handle thing, the button, he, he could push like Coca-Cola 7-Up, uh, Jack Daniels or, you know, vodka, you know, whatever button because he had like five or seven that would go in there, right? Well, she worked at the company, I believe it was called ABC, and it's in Vacaville where I used to live briefly. And one day we went out to the club in San Francisco and we drove all the way back. It was like an hour, and a, about an hour and a half drive back. And it was about 3.34 in the morning. She goes, oh my God, I'm going to be late for work. I'm like, what are you talking about? She goes, I got I think they started work at 4 or 4.30 in the morning. We showed up and there's all these people outside waiting to be let into this building. Now, here's the thing. Number one, she she had to get up super early in the morning. And I mean super early in the morning. Now, she loved the nightlife. And she would always go to clubs. She would get two hours of sleep a night. And, you know, and on and on. And on. You know, she was exhausted. And she, she went to night school. That's where I met her was in junior college. And she was just exhausted constantly because she was working all day. And then she was up all night. And this was like round the clock. So the other thing was one day I noticed her hands had this really rough, brown, thick, like it was like a callus, but it wasn't. It was chemicals. She goes, well, we have to dip the plastic parts into the chemicals. I go, they don't give you gloves. She goes, no, you don't understand. We got to go all the way down. The gloves go up to about here, and and the chemicals go down inside it, and it and it just soaks it in the glove, and it's worse. I was like, she goes, so we don't wear them. I was like, 
oh god i go honey that's going to cause cancer that's not healthy that's going to cause you major problems down the road so i i said why don't you get a job at jc panics or macy's i go you you love to go shopping you love those she goes yeah i do i go and they open up at 10 o'clock in the morning so the very earliest you're going to have to be there is probably eight or nine in the morning you know if you have to do any prep work probably at nine i go so you get to sleep in till seven or eight o'clock every morning i go then you can go out to the clubs and you and you can come home and be home at two o'clock in the morning and you can still get about five hours worth of sleep and she goes Oh my God. Not only that, here's the worst part. They paid them minimum wage at that job. And I'm like, JC Penney's and Macy's will pay you more than them. So you're going to make, and not, they paid, ended up paying her uh, $2 more than minimum wage starting. So she just right off the bat, she went from that job. And after about a year, she, was, she started looking to be a, a nurse or an assistant nurse. She didn't like that. She didn't like the training. So she quit. So then she got a job. So it's like this one little thing that I did for her because she was stuck at that job for years. It kind of catapulted. And then she ended up getting a job being an at-home care nurse where she took care of this guy who got cerebral palsy when he was in the military. So he had full benefits and full coverage and around the, he couldn't walk. So he was like in bed and they had to lift him out of bed and take him to the bathroom and shower. And they had to give him a shot in medicine every morning. So they had a, a registered nurse that was there from like eight in the morning to whenever. So it was eight hour shifts for three nurse, for three women. One was a nurse. The other two were assistants. She had no training, no training, nothing, nothing except for that nurse that trained her how to give him a shot, bathe him and give him his medicine, et cetera. The basics. She started making way more money than you would ever imagine someone with no education. And I was like, back then, I think it was 15 bucks an hour. I was like, holy shit. Like, like that was a lot of money. That's more than when someone starts a job doing like construction or something like that. And all she did basically was, yeah, she showered him and bathed him and that stuff and gave him his medicine. But other than that, they went to the mall, they went to the movies, they hung out, they watched TV all day. They went to Blockbuster, rented movies. And then one day, about six months later, she goes, I'm going to ask for a raise. So she went from like 15 bucks up to 17. And then about six months later, she goes, I'm going to demand another raise. I'm like, dude, they're going to fire you. Like, what are you thinking? Don't blow it. Because she was making like 17 bucks an hour. She ended up getting another raise. And then six more months later, she said, yeah, if I don't get a high, another raise, I'm going to quit. She ended up making as much money as the registered nurse. <laughs> so here's the deal. I was always supportive of her and she was never supportive of me. And I'm sure a lot of you have gone through that, okay? So let me slow down here a little bit. All right. So I guess the overall thing is when they when they want to see your downfall, they want to see in the background, they cut you down. The biggest thing is like when they're like, why don't you want to be friends? I, oh, yeah, here it is. Like with my last narc, when he showed up five months later, he was like, you know, why don't you want to be friends? I, I just don't understand. And I was looking at him like, what? Like, did you not just hear like everything I said to you and, and all the hell we went through? So that was a, that was a big kind of a, I don't know, what would you call it? Yes, this was a project. Okay. So let, let's move on to funner stuff. Um, all right. <laughs> all right. So this number one and one isn't as fun This from that one on it will be. So, they run you off. They treat you like absolute shit. And you finally leave like, and they discard you. Right. And in my case, I left cause they, they literally ran me off. I was like, dude, I fuck it, whatever. I'm out of here. And then they wonder why you're so upset. I'm sure you've had Amy, Amy, did that ever happen to you? I'll wait a second. Then I'll get out to the fun one. Hmm. I know what it is. Let me turn this light night down. We've got a glare. That's probably a little better. Yeah. All right. So, Amy, maybe we'll do one when you're on the phone. Maybe we'll do a, uh, a live stream. You could be on the phone because interaction would be better for me. So, all right. So, here's one. I promise you it's going to get better from now on. It's going to be great. So, my ex-girlfriend, she lived with her, her sister's family, and her mom and dad lived there too. And they all lived in like, I think it was like a three or four bedroom house. She had her own bedroom. And back then, we didn't have cell phones or computers. Some people might have had computers, and really, really rich people had cell phones, but it was uber expensive back then. It was like 10 bucks a minute or something, some ridiculous, maybe six bucks a minute to talk on the phones. No one had them. Like, nobody had them at all. 
Uh, in fact, I'd only seen one in my lifetime. It was one of the richest kids in town. His parents had to let him use it for one day. It said, only do it for like 10 minutes. That was it. So back then we had pagers. That's when pagers just came out. Um, okay, let me look at Amy's thing. In fact, it would be ghosted and then he would magically. Re yeah. Oh, yeah. This is close to that. Oh, no, this is the same thing. Magically, okay, reappear a week later like nothing happened. Oh, man, you aren't, you aren't cutting that. That's what I'm going to. But this is going to be better. So we had these pagers. And you could call them on the phone, and then you could do, like, little messages and stuff. Or, you know, they would know it was your phone number, first of all. Yeah, pagers, yeah. And um, so here's what happened. One day... You know, she didn't call me. I thought, well, that's not unusual. And another day went by. So finally I paged her and nothing. I thought, well, maybe she's pissed off at me again. There's always something, you know. So I didn't think nothing of it until a week went by. So then I paged her and said, hey, can you at least call me and let me know if you're okay? Nothing. And then another week went by. And I had paged her probably every day, twice a day, like, hey, are you okay? What's going on? The first time she did this, she was gone for three months. She had literally moved out of her sister's house. Now, here's the thing. Her family didn't know. Her job, number one, she had already gotten a job in another city that was about 40 minutes away. She had given her notice at her job. Nobody knew except her boss. And she literally packed her stuff at nighttime, like three in the morning, and left when everybody was asleep. Nobody knew. She was gone for three fucking months. And she calls me up one day out of the blue and says, hey, honey, how you doing? I'm like, uh, literally, like you said, Amy, like nothing happened. I'm like, uh, I'm doing fine. <laughs> and so she had she called from the place where she lived. And she, oh, I'm running around with these other people. I'm like, other people? She, yeah, they're my friends. I'm like, your friends? Like, what are you talking about? So I was never allowed to go over there. She never gave me the apartment. And she goes, well, I'm moving back to, into my sister's house anyways, you know, like this week. So that wouldn't matter. I'm like, oh, who, who the fuck are these people that you're so close to that you moved in with? All right. And I'm going to lead up to one more thing of that. Let me, let me write down. All right. So don't forget. So, so about another year goes by and she, and she literally showed up that in acted like nothing happened like like literally they were gone one day so this happened again a couple times and about the third time i think it was maybe the fourth time now, i dated her for eight years she left for six months her sister and i did not get along and i and i know now why what it was and i couldn't like why doesn't your fucking family like me what what the fuck like i, I don't understand because she was talking shit and her sister told me that one day, a year towards the very end of the She's all I ever hear is these bad things about you. I'm like, I haven't done nothing, you know, that kind of shit. And so, oh my God, like they are. I believe it's the time. Okay, yeah, watch this, Amy. It's going to blow you away. And so she's gone. She pulls another, uh, what's the word for it? Like the Shazam dude, the magical dude, that whatever. The mad, I forget the name of it. And she's just gone. And I'm paging her. She's not calling. I went to her, her job and they're like, Michael, you know, we don't know where she's at. You know, she just quit and just up and left. And we're like, and here's a weird thing. They would always give her a job back too. That was another thing. That was another weird thing. Um, and then she just literally six months later. So now she's in Sacramento, about an hour and 15 minutes away from where we lived. And she calls me out of the blue, gives me directions, invites me over. She had this job up there. And she was living with someone in someone's home. And I'm thinking, like, who the fuck is this person? Who, Like, how do you guys know each other? And she did this a couple of times. She did this in Davis. Um, that was a weird one. And she literally each time would show up. Like, one time she showed up at my door, didn't even call me, and was gone for, I think this time it was the three-month one, the, the, the third or fourth. She was, like, the third three-month one. And she just showed up at my door. Hey, honey, do you want a little lunch? I'm like. Where you been? She goes, what do you mean? Like nothing happened. That is a very narcissistic thing. They literally act like nothing fucking happened. So it happened one more time, but it was a lot shorter, about two months. And she invited me over and it was, it was these people. I'm like, well, who, 
there was another group of people in a totally different city. I'm like, who, like what? So I finally, on the way home from that meeting, I was like, who the fuck are all these people? Like, how do you know all these different people in all these different areas? And I literally said to her, I said, you could literally be a CIA agent and I wouldn't fucking know it. I go, you have this other life that, that I have no information about. Has that happened to you guys? There's two people on there. I only see one people responding. God, I should have started later because people from Europe start kicking in. Yeah, like they're oblivious to time. Here, let me grab. I'm going to grab something real quick. All right. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. We're using a different microphone, so that won't that noise won't. Yeah. <laughs> and yes. So I've got more on here. So let me make sure there's something else that I was going to say. You know, if if I remember, I'll come back to it. So okay. So let's go to another one. All right. How about this one? Let's say you catch them red-handed. You know what? I got. You know what? Screw it. I'm going to tell you some some fucking interesting thing so it's good kind of a spiritual thing not kind of totally one of the times when she was gone it was about two or three weeks later her sister had called me and that took a lot because her sister never called me ever and she is crying and where's my sister i just i just want to miss her and and she's like i just want to make sure she's okay i just don't know if she's dead or alive i'm like my i swear i don't know where she's at and it was really sad and, and um and she goes michael please i just want to i just want to hear her voice and so um, i said my you are welcome to come over you are welcome to live here you can sleep on my couch you can you can show up at midnight one two three four five in the morning the middle of the day i go i'm telling you She's not here. And so that was kind of sad, actually. Um, so, all right. So here's what happened. That that triggered my heart. Now, here's, let me tell you something, what I noticed about spiritual stuff. When I can do spiritual stuff, like heal people, and um, and here's this, what I'm going to give you today. I'm going to uh, um, figure out what it's called, clairvoyance. I figure out what it's called. It's when my heart opens up, when I'm like, when I'm crying or when like someone like needs help bad, that's when I'm like, boom. And then another one is if someone hurts me really bad. Oh, you don't want to do that. Oh no. Oh no. That, that opens me up to full 12th degree black belt spirituality. And I'm not joking. I know you think I'm kidding. I'm, what I'm trying to say is I don't do it. I, I can do it pretty much at will now. But I will tell you this, when I am worried about someone, when my heart's involved, when someone hurts me, oh, shit, you, you, you fucking blew it. Like, I'm just, I'm, because in order to get there, you got to be, it's like you're going, what you're really doing is you're going from your logical brain deep, 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 deep into the spiritual brain, the right brain. And you generally have to meditate or pray and do all this stuff. But when, when I'm that committed, some really cool things happen. And I'll give you, this is one. So what happened was. I was so worried and and I was concerned about her sister Mai that I was like, well, okay. And so I had I did this one of this full meditation. I used to light a candle like this and I'd put it on the floor and I'd get up on my couch and get in the meditation. I do I would do ha breathing for about 20 minutes or more. I would do it an hour if I have to. And I would do I would stretch and do deep breathing with my stretching for about 40 minutes or more. And then I would go into that meditational pose and I would just until absolute clarity, something happened and something, it was a feeling. I didn't hear anything. I didn't see anything. And I just said, like, get in your car. I was like, start your car. I'm in my car. I pull out I'm pulling out and take a right. I'm driving down the road. I'm like, and it kind of went away. I was like, oh, damn. And then when I got closer to the highway, I said, take the on-ramp, go to the right. So I was heading up towards Sacramento and just cruising and it was gone again. I was like, what the fuck? Where did you go? And I was like, God damn it. And I was just about to take a turn to turn around. And then I said, no, I'm just going to keep going to see. Hopefully it'll come back. And I was about 10, 15 minutes down the road. And all of a sudden I had this feeling that was like, take this exit. I'm like, okay. 
go over the bridge. Okay, go over the overpass. I went over the overpass. It was like, go down. Stop. It was a stop sign. And basically, it didn't it didn't say anything. So if it doesn't say anything, I just keep going down the path. So one stop sign, two stop signs. I think it was the second or third one. It was like, turn right. And I turned right, and I was going, going, going. I was going to stop. And then I was like, no way. <laughs> So I'm looking, and if I would have gotten out of my car, and I should have, but it was a house that was turned into like a four-bedroom apartment, and they had steps that went up here, and I'm like, she's in that fucking apartment, and I fucking knew it, and I'm like, no way. I'm like, man, because it was two in the morning. I'm like, man, I can't knock on someone's door. They're going to be like, what are you doing knocking on my door at two in the morning? And so, and I wish to God I would have. If I wish to God I would have done one thing, just gotten out of my car and walked behind it. Because the driveway went down at an angle, and there was a big white van parked right here. And on the other side was her car. She had a little tiny black sports car, but it was pulled up, and I couldn't see it from where I was at. And so if I would have just gotten out of my car, I would have seen her car. And, be like, and, and so here's the deal. She ended up calling me the next day, and she goes, I had this really weird feeling that you were here last night. And she gave me the directions, and it was in Davis, the city of Davis, where UC Davis is. And I'm, as I'm driving, I thought, well, what are the odds? You know, what are the coincidence, you know? And I took the overpass, and I'm driving down. I'm like, wait a minute. No way. <laughs> like, and I turned like, no way. And it was the exact same spot, okay? Another time I did something like that was she was gone for, I think, this was about the fourth time she did it, maybe the fifth time. And this time I thought, no, I'm not going to wait six months or three months. And I and I got on my meditation thing and did the same thing. I'm driving down the road. And instead of going right towards Sacramento, I was like, go over and then loop around and go west the other way. Okay. And I'm driving, driving. I'm going up the big hill. I forget what it's called, but towards Vallejo. Um, Napa's would be to the right. And I'm coming down. Also, I was like, you know, pull off. And, there, and right as you go down on the other side, there's one of those it's called a rest stop where you can rest and or sleep overnight there. You know, they got bathrooms and stuff and, and there's all these cars that was packed them. And I'm like, and it's nighttime. It's about 10 or 11 o'clock at night. And I'm thinking, is she, like, is she here? And I kept driving, driving. And I almost gave up. I thought, no, I'm going to go through all of them. And as I turned around, there was her car and I knocked on her window because she had like uh, towels up right to, for privacy and she was sleeping and uh, that was another interesting experience. So that's another one of those spiritual things. I've done a lot of those things. And with her, what the interesting thing was, I did a lot of them like, with, like that with her. She saw a lot of things. So I kind of wish she was in my life so we could do recording videos and she could say, yeah, you know, he knew when this was going to happen and it did happen and blah, blah, blah. So, so I kind of got a little bit off track there. Well, maybe not. Maybe that was kind of cool. All right. Here's one. They get caught red-handed cheating on you, and then they accuse you of cheating on them. Has that happened to you? I'm going to wait. Hopefully, Amy's still there. <laughs> so the next couple ones, it's going to stay on this, this thread is, is going to be even funnier. Um. All right, Amy said yes. To the other person, if you can, go ahead and uh, make a comment. I appreciate it. So how about this? Okay, so I had caught Max. Okay, oh, God, this is another one of those experiences. Oh, my God, I got to tell you about this one. I had I had caught her cheating on me more than once, and now I would be like, well, we're done. And I, But I would broken up with her each time, and she eventually would come back to me. Uh, and like a sucker, she would cry just big tears, and I called them alligator tears. Now I learned when it comes to narcissists, the phrase out, and it's funny because I've been saying this since my, my mid twenties about her, and you know, alligator using that phrase alligator tears, but I didn't realize that was kind of a narcissistic term when they fake cry, but they can they can literally pour it on, and they can it's like a water faucet, right? Oh man, but I'm telling you, um, the best one was when I was in Walmart and a lady was cheating with, he was cheating with Dr. Walk in front of me, and she had the deer and headlights look as she looked back at me, um. Okay, I'll get back to that. So when she cried, though, she would sob. And I'm telling you, I swear to God, even to this day, even though I know everything that I know now, I swear she was like, just like, she would beg me, please, please give me an I'm so sorry. And, and 
oh man, even thinking about it. So anyway, so so here's what happened. I'm coming home one night and it was the weirdest thing in the world. I just thought, you know what? I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go a different route. And I'm gonna go buy my old home where we used to live when I was in high school. So I instead of going all the way, because if you went straight down, it was a straight shot, you take a right, and it's a straight shot, two really long, like a mile, mile and a half, and a mile up, right? So just boom, 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 quick. Well, if you went took the right, you had a lot of stop signs and you know turns and up and down, and it, was, it took a bit longer. But I thought, you know, I'm gonna go by, and as I'm driving by, I remember on the left side, up about a half a block or a block, was my sister lived in this condo. It was the only condo vacuum I had. It was the first one, and it was a big deal. They had a gate. Uh, they, it was like a locked built, like a secured gate and all that stuff. And they had, I think they had two pools and two tennis pools, two tennis uh, tennis uh, courts. And so back then it was kind of a big deal, especially if you weren't in a big city. You know, like, whoa, we got a condo, and my sister lived there, right? So as I'm driving by, I just happen to look. <laughs> And as I'm looking through the fence, um, the big gate, because there's a big gap, just, you know, middle, you know, metal fence. So you could easily see through it. I thought, no fucking way. <laughs> it looked like my girlfriend's car. It was the newer Toyota and it was forest green. And I thought, fuck it. And I pulled over <laughs> and I, um, I jumped over the fence, climbed over the fence and I didn't remember her license plate number, but I remember the first three digits. I'm like, yeah, that's probably her car. And the one thing was she had a big crack down a windshield. I forget how it happened. Probably someone did it. And Oh, I'm going to explain that. Eggs. All right. So there's a big crack down the right side all the way down. It was a big, thick crack. And then that's how I'm like, then I'll know. Well, like the dumb empath. And I did look and I thought – yeah, but there's a possibility that someone could have the exact same car that just came out this year, same color, same first three digits in life with a crack. No, duh. So I remember, like, wait a minute, because back then we didn't have AAA. Like, you know what? Now you can call Geico with AAA, and they'll send someone if your battery died, or if you got locked out of your car. So what we did back then was we exchanged keys just in case we're out of town somewhere and we fucking lock our key in the car, lose our keys, right? So we could call each other, like, I need the keys, right? So I had the key to her car. <laughs> so I'm like, if this key works, then I'll know. And so I unlock the car, and I go in, and I'm like, this is her car. And I thought, yeah, but sometimes other keys work on other – now this is me being over-forgiving and trying to benefit of the doubt, right? And I thought, well, the registration or whatever, the paperwork – and the insurance work is in the glove box. So if her name's on it, it's her damn car. So I opened it up and I'm like, oh, fuck, it was her. And I was pissed and I was, I didn't know what to think. I was sad. So I closed it. But what did I think? I know. I took her car and I moved it over uh, six spots, maybe seven, but definitely six or more, six or seven spots. And I moved it all the fucking way over, right? So the next morning, she shows up at about 1030 in the morning. It was Saturday. Hey, honey, how you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm doing fine. How was your night? She goes, oh, I was good. I go, did you sleep well? She goes, oh, I slept great. I'm like, where did you sleep? Did you sleep at someone else? No, I go, where did you sleep? She goes, I slept at home. Why? I'm like, are you sure? She goes, yeah. I'm like, in your bed? She goes, yeah. I go, you absolutely sure that last night you slept in your bed? She goes, yeah. Well, I don't understand. Why are you asking? I'm like, you? No, 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 no. Then I go, I go, hey. Did you notice your car was moved over six spots? And she goes, she goes, oh, was that you? <laughs> and now she goes, oh, no, honey, I just went back there to get my clothes and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, fuck you. And and, and I say, really? I go, because I, I set my alarm and I went back at 630 in the morning. Your car was still fucking there. <laughs> she goes, I'm sorry. And we broke up again. So that was kind of another one of those. I don't know if you call that coincidence, but I kind of feel like. I just followed for some reason. It was a weird thing that I had took in that road because it was way harder and I hated taking it. So that was just another one of those things. So I'm going to say one thing before I get to some more, some more, and I'll answer that. I really feel even that one, there was some kind of spiritual connection. or Okay, I'm, I'm just going to say this. With her, for sure, 
I I was really spiritual just by being in her presence. It just it popped me open, and I always thought it was because in her culture. Okay, so I did a lot of spiritual things that she saw with her own eyes. She was holy shit, that's awesome. But it wasn't that big of a deal because in her culture, she was raised in Laos, and her her family monk from her village had moved to Stockton, and was the head monk in the temple that her brother had built years ago. Okay, so Stockton was about. Well, the temple, because it was far out, so from where we was, I think it's about an hour and 15 minutes from where we lived. So, anyways, so I ended up going to see Buddha Calm when I went through my awakening uh, because I knew her and she knew him, and that was a really good thing. But my point being is I really believe or believed at the time there were – because because I remember when I would do all these amazing things, i go, don't you think it's fucking awesome? Like, Because I was tripping. She goes, yeah, it's fucking good. You're, like, really spiritual and, like – well, the thing was, is she was growing up in a culture where like monks did this stuff all the time. Not all the monks, but like Buddha Kham was one of them. Oh my God, that dude was awesome. Let me tell you, okay, let me tell you another story and we'll get back to the, uh, the things. You know how I talked about how some narcissists have demons in them, right? Well, we had been dating for years and, and you know, in their culture, it's like you don't date someone for more than like a year you have to get married right like and there her family was upset and i asked her to marry me six times and she kept saying no let's wait let's wait let's wait six months so i learned and let me give you a tip if you ever ask someone to marry you and they say let's wait they're not in love i am fucking telling you because when you're in love you want to get married the first fucking day okay i am telling you i am telling you if they go, well, we need to wait. We need to wait. They're not in love. They're not in love. I'm fucking telling you. Fucking leave them. All right? Otherwise, you'll do like I did, and you'll waste eight years of your fucking life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, eight years. I'll never do that. I'm telling you, if I, if I ask a girl to marry me, and she says, no, well, let's wait. I was like, nope, see you later. Bye. Hasta pasta. Bye. <laughs> so after we had been together for a long, long time. Buddha Kham wanted us to get married too, but Buddha Kham knew something. All right. So we went there one day. I used to go there and pray and meditate with the monks and they would splash all this water. They would put water. They'd put these flowers from Laos in there. They would put um, perfume in there. They would put, um, um, there's something else they put in there. Kind of forgetting, but they put a lot of things that smelled really nice. And it just really like, it like enlightened you. It was, and it lasted for weeks it was awesome you're just in total bliss and love and and so one day and that's why i used to always go back because no matter how stressed i was they would just totally mellow me out right well that was a healing thing he was healing energies and whatever in me so one day we went and he goes you know come here let's you know we bowed and we we were praying we were on the ground and he was chanting something and he just kept chanting and chanting and chanting and chanting and chanting. And I felt now it's the middle of winter. They don't use heat. It was not a well-built built, well built uh, building. Her brother built it. He's not a construction worker. Um, and so there was always cold drafts. So it was cold outside. We had like our sweaters on and we had our jackets on and our beanies on inside the temple. That's how cold it was. Well, all of a sudden, I feel this just heat, like a really hot radiator, like a fireplace, and right next to me. And I finally, like, I cheated, and I opened my eyes, and I looked at her. She's dripping sweat. <laughs> she took off her beanie. She took off her jacket. She took off her sweater, and she's just dripping fucking sweat. And I'm like, like, like we were in 110 degrees. And I'm like, what the fuck? And she goes, oh, my God. I feel like I'm on fire. And I'm looking at her I'm like, you're sweating a lot. She goes, I'm so hot. I'm burning up. And the monk looks at me. He, he, he kind of smiles, like grins, like it was a good thing. It wasn't a sneaky. It was like, and I'm like, and I realized like, oh, he's trying to take a demon out of her. And I just intuitively knew he was trying to pull it out. And the pulling it out was like, a, it was like a battle. And one thing she said was, she said, she goes, it's the weirdest thing in the world. I, and well, one thing she said when she was on fire, she was, it looks like the building's on fire, like everything's on fire. I'm like, baby, nothing's on fire. Like, what are you talking about? Like, she goes, I had the weirdest feeling in the world that my brother was here. I go, what do you mean? 
She goes, but he's in Laos. After we did the whole thing, within 30 seconds, maybe a minute, a guy walks in the door into the room we were in. Uh, it was actually the, bi the big area. It, was, it wasn't like a small room. It was like the, the area where everyone comes and gathers and they pray and stuff. And she goes, that's my brother. I haven't seen him since I was eight years old. He just arrived that day and no one had told her. It was a surprise. Her family didn't even know. And he went to the temple first. So that was a really cool experience. Here's the sad part. I could tell by Buddha Kong, he didn't get he didn't get the spirit out. And I'm telling you, there was a demon in her for sure. <laughs> she did some wicked things. Holy shit. So let's go back to the cues you of cheating part. All right. How about this? Did this ever happen to you? I think it was that time when I caught her cold busted like that night cheating like she just cheated. Well, I had an energy healer come over to my place. I was pranic healing because that's when I was learning pranic healing. And I was like upset. I was hurt. And I was like, what the fuck am I going to do? And she showed up when he showed up. And while he's doing this energy healing stuff on me, um, pranic healing stuff, pulling energy and stuff. Out of the blue, she goes, yeah, Mike, che Mike cheated on me. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, he's a cheater. He cheats on me. I'm like thinking, what the fuck? Are you? Now, now I would have gotten pissed and I would have been good. But I, I didn't. Back then, it's like I didn't want to upset the energy healer guy. And so I'm just quiet, like, what the fuck are you saying? Like, like what? It was just like this reversal of – it was reversal of reality. But now I wouldn't do that. Now I'd be like – I would be like, fuck you. I would really let her have it. Like, that's – whoa. But has that ever happened to you where they cheated on you and you caught them cold busted and then they turned around trying to say you were the one that cheated? See, what do we got with Amy here? Would have driven a car home. Oh, yeah. I would have driven. Oh, yeah. That oh, that would have been a good one, Amy. Sorry. I wish we would have read that earlier. Okay. I'm going to read that part. So lots of laughs. I would have driven her car home and left yours. She would have felt too stupid. I know. God. I, but that was back when I was a dumb empath. <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah. Yeah, never, yeah. Same thing with me. Yeah, I'm right. Yes, all this time, over and over, all the time, over and over, yet uh, never cheated once. Okay, yeah. Let me read your other ones. So I was just about to say the, e the evil is trying to escape out of it. Oh, yeah. Let me back up. So I would have, yeah, I wish I would have, God, I wish I would have put my car. Th well, the problem is the gate's locked, though. So unless she would have been smart enough to look across the street, because I did park right across the street. She probably would have saw it as she was coming out. But, yeah, you know what? You're, you're right. I should have fucking done that. That would have been funny. So I asked him if, if she was at work, and he said no, and said, oh, well, that's what I figured because she was at Walmart, and she saw him. Oh, yeah, that one, we read that. He was about to eat, and he had a huge appetite. He took one bite after I mentioned her, and all of a sudden, he felt really sick to his stomach. Yeah. Yeah, you know, they just play with that reality. They just, they just flip it upside down. So, all right, here's another one. This happened to me with her and someone else I'm not going to mention. I'll, I'll just use hers. Uh, so she broke up with me. Or no, no, I think it was, let me think. No, I broke up with her because it was that time I caught her cheating. I might have been the other way around. But uh, let me think. Oh, no, 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 no. Total opposite of that. That's the next one. All right. I was at a club with my friend, and she walks in with a guy on his arm. Let me, let me, I'm not, I'm thinking of two stories. Hold on, let me, let me, hold on, let me make sure. She broke with me. Yeah, okay, that was the one. Okay, this was the one at the club, the Gators. All right, all I, okay, I wrote the notes. So one time she, I forget where I bumped into her. I, I don't have a specific moment, but I do specifically remember. I caught her with a guy, flat out caught her. I'm like, what are you doing? She goes, what do you mean? I'm like, you're with me. I thought, you know, like, like well, you're cheating on me. And she goes, no, I'm not. I go, how do you figure? She goes, well, we broke up. I'm like, when do we, and here's the thing. We just got back together like two weeks before, three weeks before. I'm like, what are you talking about? I thought we just got back together. She goes, well, we broke up. I go, when? She goes, yesterday. I'm like, would have been nice if you let me know. <laughs> so has that ever happened? <laughs> So that's a what the fuck moment. Let me go see. We broke up. All right. So that was a mind blowing. 
All right, so here's, okay, here's this one. Now, this one was, we were definitely broken up. And I think this was the one where I caught her on accident. I jumped over the fence and her car was there and I moved it over. I think it was this one. So about, I don't know, six weeks later, might have been two months later, uh, my friend and I, we went out to a club. This is the, definitely the one where we went out to the club. And we were Gators. So, yeah, we were Gators. And uh, I was talking to a really pretty girl. I met her like almost like within 15 minutes. Really sweet person. She was in college. I think I was in college too, I think. I think I was 23 at the time. Right now, a little older than that. And or no, I wasn't in college. I was out of college. So she was in college and really sweet. And then we were really hitting it off. She had a really comfortable, really comfortable conversation. And I don't know, about 20 minutes go by, 30 minutes. And next thing you know, two of her friends that her main friends were walking in. And then she walked in after them. And she was about, so the girl was here and I was here. And then she was about six or eight feet that way. And she is, oh, no, I was this way. That's right. So my back was back to her. And the girl that I was talking to goes, she kind of, she goes, hey, do you know that girl? And I go, who, what are you talking about? So the girl right behind you and I turned around and she was crying. And I was like, yeah. She goes, is that your girlfriend? I'm like. No, I go, I go, I, I broke up with her because she, I caught her cheating on me. And she goes, I think she needs you because she was really crying. Like, and here's the thing that when she was crying, I can't believe it was fake. I really do believe she was because she was hysterical. And so I turned around, I'm like, all right. And so I went back to her. And of course, the dog and pony shore and the carnival showed up, you know, a few days later. You know, I took her back into my arms like an idiot and we got back together like an idiot. And she just started playing fucking the same old thing, just round and round. It's a fucking circus and never fucking stops. So has that ever happened to any of you guys? <laughs> All right. Well, we got three people on. Whoever's on here, say hello. I know Amy's been saying hello. I don't know why other people, people must be shy. Or maybe it's because it's one of my narcissists. <laughs> Bastard. Isn't it amazing the tears can be turned on? Yeah, but you know what, Amy? I do, I do understand that. And, okay, like. My sister used to do this. My mom used to do this, but I could tell it was fake. I knew it was fake. Even when I was young, by the time I was a teenager, definitely by the time I was 19, I knew when I was like, that's fake as fuck. <laughs> and so, but it looked real like anyone and, and other people that would, Oh my God, you're so cold to her. I was like, and so it's just being fake. Like, but I'm telling you, even as I look, I'm telling you, I know, I know it's hard. Maybe, maybe I'm an idiot. Maybe because Amy wrote, isn't it amazing? The tears can be turned on like a faucet looked real to me so but you're right that's what narcissists do all right let's move on to another one um oh yes we were broken up and she was dating someone else and then how did this happen i was at a club and she was like, you're cheating on me. I'm like, what in the fuck are you talking about? You're with a fucking guy that you've been dating for weeks. And she's all, and it was, I don't know. I don't remember how she worded, but it was basically like, well, that's, yeah, I remember it was, well, that's different. I'm like, well, how the fuck is that different? She is, well, you're a guy. I'm like, okay. And what the fuck does that mean? Back then, I started getting pretty cocky. I was pretty, I was kind of wise to some of this back then. So at least then I call it. But it's basically, it's almost like they want to date other people, but they they don't want you to date. So it's like they want their freedom, but you they want you only to be to them. And I'm like, what the fuck? So what's another one? You call it, you, I just call it, you call it fake love. Yeah. So I'm trying to think of one more. Um. Okay, this one's kind of cute. This was a cute one. I don't even know if this is narcissistic, but since we're on the subject, it was fucking cute. So before this girlfriend, I had another girlfriend. And her friends called me up one night. I was at home. And um, she go, they're like, can you come over and pick her up? I'm like, what are you talking about? We're, like, where are you? So go, we're, I don't want to give any names out because I don't think it's right. We're at so-and-so's house. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, what's the problem? She's like, well, she's completely passed out on the on the like the middle couch, and everybody wants to sit on it. Like that's like the main area, and everyone's standing up around. And I'm like, I'm like, 
dollars. I'm like, all right. So I went and picked her up. I literally had to pick her up off the couch, carry her to the car, seatbelt, buckle her in, drive her home. I took her home, uh, put I took her clothes off, not all of them, but the, you know, jeans and shoes and shirt. And I tucked her in bed and I left. So she called me up the next morning and she's all, what did you do last night? I'm like, what do you mean? What did I do last night? I go, you know what I did last night? She goes, no, I don't. I'm like, yeah, you do. <laughs> she's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, cause she, cause she was all, okay. She was all pissed off at me, and she goes, I'm like, well, what does it matter what I did last night? And she goes, well, because you go out with your friends. I'm like, so you go out with your friends? And she goes, that's different. I'm like, well, how's that different? She goes, because you guys get drunk. And I'm thinking, what the fuck? <laughs> this, I don't know if this is a narcissistic thing, but it could definitely be because she was drunk. She may not have remembered a thing. That's probably what happened. And I'm like, what the fuck? What are you talking about? I go, you get drunk. She goes, no, I don't. I've never been drunk. I'm like, never been drunk. I'm like, bullshit. So I'll just say it. So she was like, I was like, you were totally drunk last night. She goes, what are you talking about? I go, you were so drunk. You passed out on the couch. I go, who do you think took you home and packed and put you in bed? And she's all, what do you mean? Was that you? I was like, yeah. She's like, well, you guys drink alcohol. You guys drink beer. And I'm like, what are you talking about? She goes, we drink alcohol, mixed drinks. I'm like, so because you guys have more expensive drinks, that, that means like it's okay? She goes, yeah. So as a kid, I thought I was pretty smart. And I said, well, where do you get this magical rule book from that makes up all these rules out of the blue? So I don't know if that counted, but anyways, I thought that was kind of cute. So I got some more here. Oh, I got to go back and edit that name out. So anyways, um. All right, I'm gonna see if Amy. Do you got any comments or anything? I'm feeling, I'm feeling lost here. Blow the candle out. I'm gonna wrap this up pretty soon, but I got one more. Do you have any what what the fuck moments with narcissists? That last one, I, I'm not gonna consider that. I think it's just a cute story. All right, I got one more. God, there's so many I got here. But we're, yeah. All right. All right. All right. So, okay. So you're just laughing because you, you can relate. Okay. So, you know, probably because I actually, I'll be honest with you, I think that's kind of a, a young girl thing that they pull on men. <laughs> At least that's what I thought. It may be a narcissistic thing. And I didn't, you know, because I always thought that was just a woman, the female thing. <laughs> okay. So, all right. So here's one. Here's a big what the fuck moment is I am block this person on all my social media, my cell phone, my, my emails. I'm trying to think where else. So I, I'll, this person was blocked. And I told him, no more. We're fucking done. And we had gone back and forth the conversation and emails and, oh, Jesus fucking Christ. And so he shows up five months later. And, and this is a business associate slash friend. And, um, I'm thinking, you got to be fucking kidding now. But I knew it. I could feel it. I knew that person was going to show up. And so I was like, fine, fuck it. And so I, one of the parameters that I set down was this is the last fucking time. Because he kept saying, well, there's one more thing. If you really understood this, then you would understand. And there, were, there was no one more thing. It was the same old dog and pony show, the same old bullshit. Everything I, I believed or thought or, or the way I saw it was wrong. He was right and I was wrong, you know, all that bullshit. And I was like, okay, well, you're, I said, okay, that's fine. You're right about everything and I'm wrong about everything. So are we done here? <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah, I'm going to throw in some other things because I think I put up another video, but it was really bizarre because I told him why I was so upset. I mean, I made it really fucking clear because, but we had gone round and round multiple times before this. It wasn't like we hadn't, hadn't churned this over like 20 times, maybe not 20 times, but about 10 times. And I made it really clear. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I mean, I did the alphabet on this guy, and he was just like, afterwards, when I stopped, he goes, he goes, so can we be friends now? And I was just like, what? No. No, we can't be friends. 
Like, did you not hear everything I just said? It's like, it's like they fucking delete anything and everything you say or what you say, they change it to the complete opposite of what you fucking said. And I'm just like, no, we, we can't. And he goes, well, why not? I don't, and, he, he, and I mean this sincerely. He, he sincerely goes, well, I don't understand. Why not? Like, you know, we had such a great time. And I'm thinking, oh, my fucking God. Such and like, has that, okay, I'm going to ask you again. Has that ever happened to you guys where, I'm going to show you, it says, okay, I'm going to show that. Has that ever happened to you guys where they were like, but we had such a, you know, we always had such a great time in, in the past. I'm thinking, what are you talking about? And so. I know that's happened to some of you. Let me let me look at this real quick. What Amy's got. She's got a lot of I'm so I have so many that I don't know. Or they get a wild hair up their ass and block you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that sucks. Fine, good. We are done. Then out of, oh yeah. They, yeah, yeah. So they block you, they discard you, they get rid of you. And then what you wrote is then out of nowhere they come back like like it was your fault. <laughs> or worse, like, I don't understand. What are you mad at me for? <laughs> like Cause you fucking got rid of me. You broke up with me. You you left. You blocked me. Like, now you're coming back like nothing happened. Well, <laughs> yeah, that that's a what the fuck moment. The mind fuckery is just too much. They do not recall. Oh yeah, they do not recall any of the bad times at all. Oh yeah, that happened with him. Uh, because he had really. You know, I'm gonna say. I, I don't know if I put this in another video. If I did, I I, I forget. <laughs> Here I'm saying forget. Because I, I have. Let me think. I think I might have done a video, but not. I don't think it did it live. We had, he had called me up about, so yeah, it was 11 months before this. This is when, you know, he came back five months. I'm like, dude, don't ever call me again. Fuck off. Go to fucking hell. You know, all this shit. And I forget what it was. What, why I go, what are you talking about? I go, I've given you, I think he said, can you give me another chance? I go, dude, I've given you another chance. I go, you won't fucking change. No, dude, I've changed. Oh, they always say that. He goes, what are you talking about? I'm like, uh, remember last January when you called me up out of the, here's what I did. Pick up my phone. I have a landline and a cell phone. It happened to be the landline just for my business because it's, it's clear. And I pick up the phone. Hello, this is Mike. And because um, on the cell phone, it's like right there, the name and stuff, whereas on the landline, you have it, but it's dim and you got to kind of look at a certain angle. Mine's just not a very good one. And he goes, hey, Mike, it's so-and-so. I'm like, okay, well, what's going on? He goes, am I triggering you? I swear to God. I'm like, what? I thought, it was, I thought he was just fucking with me. I thought he was trying to be funny or something. And I had already gotten pissed off at him a few times before this, but this was in early stages, I would say still. And he goes, am I triggering you? I'm like, what are you talking about? I, I, like, Because last time we talked, everything was fine. It wasn't like anything bad happened. Was, so I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, am I triggering you? Am I triggering you? Am I triggering you? I'm like, no, but you're acting really weird. Like, I don't get it. Is this some kind of a joke? I, is it, I don't understand. Like, I literally, I didn't understand. I had no concept of like, well, like what do you mean? Like, it's, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, because it, it was so stupid. It didn't make any sense. And he goes, Am I triggering you? Am I triggering you now? Am I triggering you now? I'm like, no, dude, you're not triggering me, but you're acting really fucking weird. I go, is something wrong? Are you upset? Is this a joke that I, I'm not getting? Like, I don't understand. He goes, am I triggering you? And I go, you know what, dude? You are fucking weird. I go, don't ever fucking call me again. I'm fucking done with you. I go, and I was like, dude, you're fucking a weirdo. And I hung up with the fucking phone. Oh, the text messages started, the emails, the, the voice messages. The next morning I had like three or four or five messages text messages, you know, and this went on every fucking day. And like, and I, I, back then I didn't, I didn't know that he was a narcissist. I hadn't figured it out if, now. Oh, with what I know now, I would know in a heartbeat. So I emailed him back and said, Hey dude, I go, you've act, been acting really fucking weird. You've been like argumentative. You argue. I go, dude, I'm just, I'm sick and tired of all this bullshit. I go, we're fucking, don't ever call me again. You're, you know? And so he then denied that. He goes, I don't remember that happening. I'm like, what are you talking about? You don't remember. Like, how do you not remember that? Like, I didn't talk to you for, I think it was like a month or something. And he goes, no, I don't remember that at all. I'm like, I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. What the fuck moment. Right. It's like, what the fuck? And then he, then he tried to blame me as well. Are you sure your memory's not messed up? And don't, you know, you sure it's not something to do with blah, blah, blah. And like, 
I go, what the fuck are you talking about? I go, I've got it in a fucking email in my text messages. I can, I go, I'll tell you what, right now, I'll go upstairs and I'll forward it back to your fucking email and you, we can look at it together on your fucking phone. Anyway, and then, okay, here's another what the fuck moment. And then he was like, hmm. Hmm. Well, what about this other thing? And I'm like, no, 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 no. You're not going to fucking, what's the word for it when they completely like discard, discount what you, what you fucking said? And I'm like, no, no, you're not going to fucking do that. And I'm like yelling at him. You're not going to change the fucking subject. Bull fucking shit. Fucking admit it. And he wouldn't. And so this is what the fuck moments dealing with a narcissist. You're dealing with a little child. And here's the thing. People have written books about this, psychologists, doctors. You're dealing with a person who has an infant mentality. We're talking like a three, four, five-year-old child. So that's literally what you're dealing with. So let me say one thing, and then I'm going to kind of uh, tune in here to the uh, to you guys, to the messages. You are literally dealing with a child. So if you try to argue with them, you are wasting your fucking time. They don't care about the truth. They don't care about reality. They know what they know you're right. They know that they're lying. They know that you know that they're lying, but they don't fucking care. This is all part of this gaslighting mind fuckery that Amy Amy Sturm. And that's really what it's all about. I'm telling you. Um <laughs> it's fucking mind fuckery. So I'm gonna stop right there. And I mean, let me see if I got one more really cool one because this is going on pretty oh, not as long as last night. I know I got more. Why do you want to be? Oh, yeah, you got to see this one. Holy shit. All right. So we go through this whole thing. And we even went for a walk. And at the very end, I really thought I had made it clear. Because I literally was like, you know, I don't didn't want to get in an argument. In a, and so I was like, I thought I made it so fucking clear. And that's when he's like, do you want to be friends? I'm like, uh, no. And, and so then we kind of discussed things more. And he goes, well, can we be friends now? I'm like... I, I don't think that's a good idea. Um, and I and I was like, uh, did, did, like, are you not understanding me or something? And like, like I was like, I didn't know how to get the point across to the guy. You know, I admit maybe I should have smashed his windshield and yelled and screamed and jumped up and down and, and called said f you. But I was just trying to be like, fuck it. You know, it's the last time we're gonna talk. Might as well leave on peaceful terms. That was my goal to leave on peaceful terms. And I, you know, one thing I realized with narcissists, like you literally have to have an emotional impact to where they're like, fuck, okay, I get it, dude. Like, oh, fuck. And that's the thing. I wish I would have turned around the minute I, he showed up, like, get the fuck out of here. Don't, I would have, I wish I would have cussed and cursed and yelled and raw, you know, shook my freaking like whatever, you know, saber sword or whatever. Um, because if, if you're nice to them, they, they think everything's fine. And so it was just a really weird, bizarre thing. So here's the thing. I then said to him, because I'm in shock going like, well, what am I, you know, I said, after all of this, why, I said, why do you want to be friends? And his response was the most bizarre response that I've ever seen in my life. It was like this. I said, after all this, you came all the way over here, blah, 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 blah. Why do you want to be friends? And he went, and I, and I was talking about, because, you know, it was quite a distance he had to drive. And we had a long discussion. We had battled this out before and text messages and no, 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 no. And it was like, no matter what I said, I'm like, why do you want to be friends? And he went, hmm. And he literally, it took him about a minute or two. And he finally went, huh. Like he was stumped. And I'm fucking telling you, I pulled out my phone and I looked at it. And I was watching the minutes go by. And he kind of looks in, in like one minute, two minutes three minutes and I'm just watching this guy and he he finally looks up he goes I don't know I mean well uh well I mean you're you and and you know and I'm like no I don't know I go I go you have you don't I go you you don't even fucking know why you want to be friends after all of this you have no purpose so that it was at that point when I was like there's just this was just the most bizarre wacko jacko experience of my life like it was fucking nuts like so anyways i'm gonna leave it at that so let me let me read what amy says we're gonna wrap it up here unless someone's got a question and god i wish other people would have said something uh they do not recall any of the bad times yeah that's why i did that last one. Oh my god yes you can give me another chance um how many chance yeah how many chances you need 
I would love to change my identity or move to another country. Lots of laugh. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to read that last one. Not a bad one. It's just private, personal. Um, don't don't catch a case for them. What? As much as they piss us off, they will never learn. Yeah, I know. They'll never learn. They, they'll never fucking get it. It's like you're dealing with people from a psych ward. Yeah, it's it's like you're dealing with someone from a fucking psych ward. It's fucking nuts. And it's, it's fucking crazy town. And you're just like, what the fuck am I dealing with here? Yeah. So... That's it. That's the show tonight. That's the full moon thing. Let's see if there's anything. I mean, I've got more. But, yeah, we went. wonder why you don't trust. Yeah, oh, God. Here's another one. I go, I don't trust you. Because I don't see Like, why do you I don't trust you at all. And he was just like, well, why? I don't. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, that was it. He goes, he just was like, why? I don't understand. I'm like, oh, my God, we fucking. Because when he first showed up, he admitted flat out. Like, he goes, you're right. I did lie to you. I did do this to you. I did that to you. He goes, you're right. I did do this. And, of course, he led into, well, the reason is, is because my dad's fault. There was this fault. And his his reasons were, were, were bizarre, like fucking bizarre. So I'm going to leave it at that. So this was just kind of a fun Halloween thing. It wasn't a deep, serious thing. Someone else just popped on. Uh, maybe maybe the internet connection's dropping because they keep coming back. So say hello you know, if you can. I would really appreciate it. So I think that's it. Thank you for joining us on our full moon what the fuck moments with narcissists. This is Mike Colleen at MikeColeen.com. And, hey, go to my website. Just click on it. I would really appreciate it. It gives it more like. Google credit or whatever kind of builds up, you know, gets more traffic. I would appreciate it at Mike Colleen, M I K E K O L L I N dot com. And I want to make a quick request. There is a lovely young lady who I've known for about two years through someone that I knew that used to live here that moved back home to the Philippines. And um, she's in a really fucked up place. Now, she didn't understand what it was. Her family is a narcissist, and she's the empath, and they treat her like shit. She has a son who they treat like shit. And the ultimate thing is, I'm just going to say it, um, she doesn't know what a narcissist is. I try to explain it to her, and like we mostly uh, text or whatever through Facebook, the message box. And we talked a couple times uh, via f- Facebook. What do you call that? Facebook Live or Facebook where you can, you know, you can see each other like we're doing right now. Except they could talk back to me too, or she guys just type. So long story short is the family moved away to another island and they left her and her five-year-old son homeless. If anyone can help her, I don't care if it's 30 bucks once or twice you know, a month, uh, I would really greatly appreciate it. That would make a, the world of difference to me right now. Um, she needs help. So yeah, FaceTime, Amy. Yeah. She needs help, and I would really appreciate if someone out there was an angel. Maybe not someone that's on right now, but maybe tomorrow or the next day if someone sees it. So I'm going to I'm gonna put this message out there a couple times, guys, because she really needs help. And I know if you guys can't do it, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Uh, I just feel that I have got to at least make an attempt to try to find someone else other than myself that can can throw some money her way. So she's a really good person. I'll show you her picture. Her picture. She's on my homepage, actually. If you scroll down, I did some energy healing on her. Uh, what she had was she had um, she was really stressed about money and um, and life and her, and her son. It's a long story. And she couldn't have her period for five. I think it was three months or five months. And I'm like, that's not healthy. So she went to her doctor. They gave her some medication. Um. Email me. Okay. I'm going to take a picture of that. Hold on. All right. So uh, the doctor put on medication and, and two months after doing two different medications, nothing was happening. And then, so I did this, I did is mostly it was pranic healing that I did on her and I only had to do it two sessions and boom, she's had a period every, every month ever since. So she's, her health is coming back or it came back. So uh, I'm the real deal when it comes to energy healing. I got your thing in me. I don't want to show it because I think other people will see it, and I don't think that's good for you. Um, so I'm gonna leave it at that. But I made a I made an image of it, and if not, then we can exchange emails. So, anyway, she's a really good person. She's a really cool person. Uh, she's just been taken advantage of, and uh, she still doesn't know what narcissist is because I tried to explain it through typing, and it's kind of gone over her head. Um, 
But that's it. God bless you guys. Um, I'm going to get off here in a second. Is there anything anyone wants to say or questions or anything? All right, guys. God bless you. Um, I'm going to say goodbye now. And um, oh, yeah. If you guys are following me on my Instagram because people are following me, I haven't been on there in a while and I am sorry. So let me know. Even if it's only two or three of you uh, on my Facebook or not my Facebook, my YouTube channel, just say, hey, man, I, I did follow you. So I'll go back on there and start posting on there and start interacting. OK, hey, God bless you guys. Um, that's it. Peace out. Love you.